Hello and welcome back to Math Class in Session. Today, scalar and vector projections. The projection of A onto B. Well, a projector is something that shines a light through a film and, and projects an image onto a wall. Well, this is kind of similar because it's like there's a light source shining straight down onto B. See the word here, onto B. So the light source is shining straight down onto B, and A, vector A, casts a shadow onto that vector. So here's our light source, theoretically, and here's our shadow. And this vector is the projection of A onto B. Here's the thing. It doesn't matter how long B is. B could be really short. It's how it's the projection is onto the line of B. Now, if B was pointed in the opposite direction here, then this projection would be a negative. The thing is, there's a scalar projection and there's a vector projection. The scalar projection is the magnitude of this blue vector. The vector projection is the vector itself. Scalar projections, a new concept. The scalar projection is the magnitude. Now, this is new notation here. Different textbooks use different notations. This means the projection of this vector A onto this subscript vector B. Projection of A onto B. So the light, short, the light source is shining directly onto the subscript vector B. The vector projection is the actual blue vector, while the scalar projection is the length of that blue vector. Let's investigate further. If theta is obtuse, so theta here is obtuse, B is pointing in the wrong direction. And so we would have to conclude that the scalar projection is negative. If theta is exactly 90, so, so this blue vector would be sticking, well, vector A would be pointing straight up, the light, short, the light source would not create a shadow at all, and so the scalar projection would be 0 if theta was 90. Generally speaking, the projection of A onto B is not necessarily the same magnitude as the projection of B onto A. I mean, it can be, but it certainly is, these are two different expressions. The scalar projection of A onto B is independent of the length of B. So this vector B could be a short little stubby vector and we could still have a projection of A onto it. It's actually the projection of A onto the line that's parallel to B. Some observations. The scalar projection of A onto B is the magnitude of A cos theta. Now we know this from our general case diagram where if you want this magnitude, we'll take this hypotenuse and multiply it by the cosine of this angle. So this projection of A onto B is magnitude of A multiplied by the cosine of theta. We also, let's collect some facts. We also know that the dot product of A dot B is length times length times cos. So if we were to divide through, if we were to divide through by magnitude of B, we would have isolated magnitude of A cos theta. And look, there it is, magnitude of A cos theta. So this must be the projection of A onto B. And so this is the projection of A onto B. We dot A and B and divide out the, the magnitude of the little subscript vector. We could remember it that way. You want the projection of A onto B? Dot these two, and then divide out the magnitude of the subscript vector.
and you'll get the magnitude of a cos theta, of course. The scalar projection of b onto a is different. It's still the dot product, but the magnitude of a got divided out. And so the, it would be the magnitude of b times the cos of theta. Now, we might remember this another way and just look at this and go magnitude of this large vector times the cos of the angle between them. Or we could dot them and divide out the magnitude of b. Example, for a couple of vectors in 3 space, cal calculate the scalar projections of u onto v and v onto u. For u onto v, dot them and divide out the magnitude of vector v. I hope you know how to dot or find the dot product. How to find the magnitude, square root of the sum of the squares of the coordinates of v here. So it would be some of the squares of the actual, they're called components. And do the math. Similarly, when we want the projection of v onto u, we'll take their dot product and divide out the magnitude of u. Magnitude of u is the sum of the squares of the components in u, so it will be square root of 3 squared and negative 5 squared and 2 root 3 squared. And we can do that quite easily because it's 9 plus 25 plus 4 times 3 is 12. So 9 plus 25 34 plus 12, 46, root 46. And we can calculate that with a decimal. Example, calculate the angle that a given vector in 3 space makes with each of the coordinate axes. Well, here's my vector 2, 3, 5. Here's my coordinate axes here, the x-axis, y-axis, z-axis, the vector 2, 3, 5. It is required to find the angles alpha, beta, and gamma. Alpha is the vector that this vector makes this position vector makes with the x-axis. Beta is the, is the angle that this vector makes with the y-axis. And gamma is the vector that it, I'm sorry, that the angle that it makes with the z-axis. Now, we can observe that the projection that this vector, 2, 3, 5, makes along the x-axis is 2. Because if we, if we were to look at it, from the side here, we could see that the, with a light source shining straight down on the x-axis, there's the shadow right there. It's of length 2. And we can see that if similarly, the shadow on, on the y-axis would be of length 3, and on the z-axis, it would be of length 5. Recall the basis vectors i, J and K. Calculating alpha. Well, we know that the dot product of our vector with I is length times length times cos. Now, our vector was 2, 3, 5. So the cos of theta, the, and I'm sorry, the cos of alpha, the, the angle that our vector makes with the x-axis, is the, the dot product that it makes with i divided by magnitude of the vector times the magnitude of the, of the uh, basis vector i. And since we know that v is 2, 3, 5, and i is 1, 0, 0, and the magnitude of v, of course, will be the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 5 squared, while the magnitude of i, of course, is 1, we can work out our cosine and we can find this thing that's called a direction angle. Of course, alpha is the inverse cos of 0 0.3244, and so alpha is 71.1 degrees.
Looking at it from the side, we can see our vector here, 2, 3, 5, and our angle alpha, the angle between our vector and the x-axis. And if we were to drop a perpendicular, we can see our two i's, and we can see our cosine will be 2 over magnitude of v. It's called a direction cosine. Calculation of the other two angles is similar. Cos of beta is the y-coordinate divided by the magnitude of the vector. Let's just confirm the magnitude of this vector again. It was, mag it was root 38, and the, the cosine of alpha was the x-coordinate over the magnitude of the vector. So the cosine of beta will be the y-coordinate over the magnitude of the vector. Turning it into a decimal and inverse cosing it is calculator work. And the cosine of gamma will be the z-coordinate over the magnitude of the vector. And turning it into a decimal and inverse cosing it is again calculator work. But we've come up with these angles that tell us the direction that that vector makes compared to all the different axes. They're called direction cosines, the general case for alpha, beta, and gamma for all vectors v, a, b, c. The, the vectors, I'm sorry, the angles that, that all vectors make are called alpha, beta, and gamma, and they're the angles that the vector makes with the positive x, y, and z axes, respectively. If that's true, then the cos of alpha is equal to the x-coordinate over the magnitude of the vector, and this is the cosine. The cosine of beta is the y-coordinate over the magnitude of the vector. And the cosine of gamma is the z-coordinate over the magnitude of the vector, c being this z-coordinate from the vector. Example, find the angle that the vector q, 3, negative 7, 3 root 2, makes with the z-axis. Solution, well, that will be angle gamma, and it will be the y-coordinate over the magnitude of the vector. And the magnitude is the square root of the sum of the squares of the components, so that will be a 9 plus a 49 plus a 9 times 2, 18. Add those up. And if you wanted to, you could turn it into a decimal. What happened here? Well, 2 and 76 got reduced. Now it got turned into a decimal, and we can easily find the angle that gamma makes. And that would be the inverse cosine of 0 0.4867, and we have 60.9 degrees. I'm thinking I'm using a bad symbol here. It's supposed to be a gamma. The angle is about 60.9 degrees. Now, we want to find a vector projection. So far, we've focused on finding the scalar projection, which has been the length or the magnitude of this vector. Suppose we wanted to find the actual vector itself. To find it, let's make up a plan. What we're going to do is find the unit vector in the direction of B, and we're going to find the, the scalar projection of A onto B, and we'll multiply that scalar projection multiplied by the unit vector in the direction of B, and that will give us the actual vector, the vector projection. So here's our plan. To find a vector projection, multiply the scalar projection, which we know is the dot product with b with magnitude b divided out. And we'll multiply that amount by the unit vector in the direction of b. That's our plan, so let's do that.
Let's do an example of that and then get the general case. Example, find the vector projection of OA onto OB. This is two space. So our solution will be first, let's find the scalar projection, which, which will be their dot product with OB, magnitude OB divided out. So their dot product will be, let's see, 16 minus 3 divided by the mag magnitude of OB, which is the square root of 16 plus 1. And we have that expression. I don't want to turn it into a decimal because I want to track it back. So we found the scalar projection. Now we need to get the unit vector in the direction of OB. To get the unit vector in the direction of o OB, all we do is take OB itself, which is a vector, and divide out its magnitude. Now the magnitude of OB will be the square root of 16 plus 1. There it is right there. It's the square root 17. So the vector projection of OA onto OB is this, which was the scalar projection, multiplied by the vector OB itself with its magnitude divided out. Now you'll see that this root 17 is getting multiplied by itself there. So it's like the magnitude of OB is being squared. And so this is the actual vector projection of OA onto OB. Now it's time to do it as a decimal, I guess. 52 over 17. That'll be 3 and a 17th. Well, there's vector, there's OA. And there's OB. And if we did turn these into decimals, we want the vector 3.1, negative 0 0.8. And indeed, that is the vector projection of OA onto OB. 3.1, negative 0 0.8 in two space. So the general case. For a vector projection of u onto v, their scalar, the dot product with the v divided out, or the magnitude of v, multiplied by the vector v, the little guy here, with its magnitude divided out. And you see how these magnitudes are being multiplied by themselves? So they're getting squared. And there we have the vector projection of u onto v.